Lord one more time. You got to celebrate the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. Why don't you repeat after me, everybody? I am the church of Jesus Christ. And the kingdom of God is in me. Today I openly receive the word of God. The word of God that I may be empowered to live and minister Jesus to my family, to my, family, to my, community, to my community, and this generation, this generation. in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank the Lord for his goodness. I really pray for you. Pray that the fire of God would be in your life. Inspiring you and firing you up every day to serve the Lord. Some of us are so dull because we're dull in the spirit. I've been trying to challenge you to tell you we got to we got to draw closer to the Lord. The day is becoming more evil. You got to draw closer to the Lord. The coming of the Lord is soon. and You got to draw closer to the Lord. This morning, I, I, I'm, I was impressed uh, by the Spirit. And um, was showing me, reminding me of We've prayed many prayers. Is that just me? How many of y'all done prayed some, a lot of prayers before? Men prayed some prayers. We, we've sought, set our petitions before the Lord. And uh, we've prayed to God. And uh, we've prayed many prayers. Prayers concerning our hopes. Prayers concerning our dreams. Our, what our ministries are. Anybody ever pray for your gift to be stirred? That's the problem right there. That's the problem right there. I say, anybody pray for your gift to be stirred? Some of you don't even care. I don't care about my gift. What that got to do with me? We've made prayers about our businesses. We've made prayers about our careers. We've made prayers about our money. We get more fired up about our money than anything. We, we've prayed so many different prayers, prayers about our desires for our children. Come on, if I'm telling the truth, say amen. If I'm, we, we've prayed prayers about our families. And how many of you got some family situations that you've been praying about? Been praying for names on this wall. How many of y'all been praying for these names on the wall? Things that we've been praying for. We've been praying for the salvation of our children, the salvation of our families. We've been praying for uh, not just salvation, but uh, uh, salvation and deliverance for everybody that's connected to us. How many of y'all pray for your co-workers? Pray for your neighbors. Now, you don't pray for your neighbors. You just talk about them. There they go again. There they go. There, look, look at this. Look, look, at, look at the way. Look at this. There they go again. I've done that before because I, I got a neighbor that won't cut his grass. And then he cut it and he cut a piece of it, but then he leaves the side that's next to me. He don't cut that part. So I just pray for him. I don't pray that the Lord kill him. Uh, you know how something, Lord, get him. That ain't my prayer. Lord, bless him. Uh... We prayed for prosperity. How many of y'all done prayed for prosperity before? Amen. Two of you done prayed. Y'all some, boy, y'all in the lion spirit today. I said, how many of y'all done prayed for some prosperity before? Amen. Yeah, that was a trick, trick question, didn't you? Like, Uh-oh, wait a minute. <laughs> but but um, today, um, I want to show you, God desires to give you what you prayed for. God desires 
to prosper you. Jesus declares through his word today, he says, do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And, 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 but but if, you, if you look at the very next verse after he says that, he says, and, and, and he says, noun, noun, sell everything you have. We don't ever read that part. He said, he said, he said, it's, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The next verse says, now sell everything you have. See, if you want the kingdom, you got to get rid of your stuff. He says, he says, and give it all away. He said, uh, what I need you to see is that there is an expectation. Somebody say expectation. There is an expectation of you that will trigger the favor and prosperity of God. Most people want you to just give them something. Most people don't want to do something first before they get the thing they want. Y'all need a scripture, don't you? That's how y'all looking at me. Bishop, give us a scripture. Second Chronicles, let me help you out. Second Chronicles. I hope y'all got some notes you can take. I I'm going to give you a few notes, so I want you to take this down. Second Chronicles, chapter 31. Second Chronicles, chapter 31, verse 20. This is what he says. He's talking to the man of God, Hezekiah, the king. He says, thus Hezekiah did. Somebody write that word did down. Uh, uh, somebody say do. Remember, we've been pressing you. Every week, we've been pressing you to be more than just a hearer, but that you would take hold of the word of God and be a complete doer of his word. So, the man Hezekiah, the Bible says, he did. That's what we need to get to. That when God tells us something to do, that at the end of the day, we're, the, the thing that will be said about us, and we did it. He says, thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah. Watch this. And he did what was good he did what was right he did what was true before the Lord his God and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God he did what was good right and true he did it in the law, that means God's word. Whatever God's word is, whatever God's word is, he did what was good according to God's word. He did what was right according to God's word. He did what was true according to God's word. In, in, in the commandment, that means God's preceding word. What did God speak to you today? He did what was good. He did what was right. He did what was true. To seek his God. Now watch this now. He did everything that God told him to do. How did he do it, Pastor? He did it with all his heart. Somebody write that down. All my heart. He did it with all my heart. All his heart. Everything that God placed in him everything that God spoke to him he didn't just do it he did it with all his heart now if you finish reading that that last part and it says so he prospered now most of us want to jump to the last part that says so he prospered so I prospered but we 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 forget about this part where it says he did what God told him to do with all his heart. 
That's what God has sent me to speak to you this morning. I want to speak to you from the subject, uh, uh, with all my heart. Write that down, everybody. With, it, matter of fact, say it to your neighbor. Say, with all my heart. We want God to operate so significantly in our life. And we do things halfway. How many bosses do we have in the house? Any bosses, any managers, any supervisors? Raise your hand high. Don't be, be proud of what you got. Uh, uh, any, any, any boss. Uh, 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 how you feel when you give somebody an assignment and they do it halfway? Then they walk up to you as if they did it the whole way. See, I did it. But we do God like that all the time. We, he, we come to God and act like we fall on our knees like he owe us something. God, I did everything you wanted me to do. You did? Write these words down. Uh, he said he, he, he did good. Uh, uh, write this word down, good. Good. Good means, it means approved of or accepted. You remember in, 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 uh, in Genesis, I believe it's chapter 4, where, where uh, Cain and Abel were supposed to bring God an offering. Remember, the Bible says, and Abel's offering was accepted before the Lord. It was actually good. So his offering was accepted. See, that's what I want you to see. We want God to work on our behalf. But what we're turning into him is stuff that ain't good. Then we're expecting him to just receive it. God, take it. You know how many people, how many people write a, a, out a tithe report and they put down a number and they call it tithe when they know it should read tip? This ain't 10%. It's just a tip. You ought to stop lying and stop acting like you tithing and just say, I'm just tipping God. I don't, I must not believe in time. <laughs> I knew y'all get quiet on that one. That was good right there. Uh, that word good, it means approved of or accepted. It means of high quality. It means profitable to God. I want you to question your life. Question yourself. Are you profitable to God? Okay, you don't want to ask yourself. Tap your neighbor. Push your neighbor. Come on, talk to your neighbor real quick. Ask your neighbor, are you profitable to God? Then I know that neighbor was mean. Turn to the other neighbor. That neighbor that looked at y'all silly and stuff like he didn't. Uh, ask the other neighbor, are you profitable to God? Now wait for an answer. Wait for an answer. Some of y'all to say not yet. Come on, don't lie. You should just say, not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm coming, though. He, 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 go, he, said, he, said, he said, Hezekiah did right. Write that word right down. He did right. Right means morally good, just, fair, principled, virtuous, righteous, ethical with God and man. It's the same story. If you go back to Cain, remember, after Cain turned in a bad offering, remember, he was all upset. And God said to him, Cain, if you do right, won't you be accepted like I accepted Abel? And most of us haven't come to the part where we'll just do right. You know, some of the biggest cheats are in the church. Some of the biggest liars are right here in the church. Tap your neighbor again. Come on, y'all. Y'all need to get, get acquainted with that neighbor this time. Tap, tap. Is he talking about you? Don't answer. Just hold it. I'm going to let you hold this one. I'm going to let you hold this one. It, it, look, look what he says. He says, he says uh, he, he, listen, you know how many times I've been cheated in the church. I had a brother, I ain't going to tell his name. He might be here. Y'all want me to tell it though? Uh, not his name, but you want me to tell the story? 
Okay, they do want to tell me stuff. They don't understand. Uh, uh, I had a brother told me one time. He, he told me, he said, he said, uh, he said, Ford, I'm selling a TV. And he said, he said, if you, he said, if you, it, because me and you good friends, I'm going to give you a good deal. I'm going to sell it to you for $250. Now, what he don't know is I heard him when he offered it to another brother for 150 I can tell stories about the saints. I, can, I, got, I got a million of those. Oh, but because we want God to bless us, but we won't do right ourselves. I, I'm just letting it simmer. I, I got plenty more, but I just want to let it simmer. Sometimes you go too fast and y'all keep moving, Bishop. No, I, I'm trying to tell you, a lot of times we want the blessings of God, but we won't do right. I had a brother come to me one time and he was a, he said, he said, he said, Ford, he said, man, I, I'm struggling. He said, my finances is messed up. He said, he said, I just lost my job. I need a job, man. And, 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 and me, man, I'm a man of faith. I listen. And I've been that way for a long time. I pulled out my good hand. I'm talking about that anointed hand. Like I, I, I pulled it out like it was a gun. Like I pulled it out and I was like, and, and I was, I was coming in the name of Jesus. He was getting ready to get a job. But as I pulled out and I was getting ready to pull the trigger, the Holy Ghost said to me, ask him, does he tithe? And I, I, I pulled it back and put it back in the saddle for a second. <laughs> put it back in the holster. I, I said, uh, I said, hey, this is a stupid question. Are you a man of God? I, Do you tithe? And he said, well, I said, well, well, because that, that don't, yes, don't start with W. He said, he said, well, you know, sometimes. I don't know how you can be a tither sometimes. Either you is or you ain't. And, 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 and so, so, so I had to put it back in the holster because uh, uh, we want God to move on our behalf, but we don't want to do right. He talked about tithing and stuff today. Listen, I, I'm just trying to help you. I don't care if you do it or not. I'm just trying to help you. Uh, 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 and then he says, he said, Hezekiah did true. Write this word down. This is a good one. He did true. He was true. True means to be faithful, to be loyal, to be dedicated, to be honest, to be sincere in agreement and harmony with God. Most of us have no clue how to just be faithful. I bet say, I don't feel like it today. But that, but listen, faithfulness is goes beyond what you feel like. I'm just trying to help. I ain't mad at nobody. I'm just trying to help everybody. I want you to get to the blessing part, but I want you to understand you if you're gonna serve God, you're going to have to be faithful. God does not bless unfaithfulness he called his own uh, a nation his, his his what he called he said he said you you are he said you backsliding Israel he said he said you he said you like a harlot he said you like a whore he said you unfaithful and, and, and I wonder what does God how does he see us in all of our unfaithfulness You know, it don't, it don't, you can just, it, under your breath, you can just say, help me, Jesus. That's all you need to do. Just say, help me, Jesus. God speaks to you, what? All the time. And how often are you faithful to what he tell you to do? That hush tells me you own like 30, 40%. How often when God speaks to you, do you say, yes, Lord? Come on, everybody say, yes, Lord. How often when he tell you, do this now, it ain't what you want to do. It actually goes against your flesh, but you got a yes, Lord, in your spirit. Yes, Lord. Now, no, I want you to go apologize to that one. But, Lord, it wasn't even my fault. No, no, no. He didn't say if it was your fault or not. He just said, go apologize. And you say, yes, Lord. 
See, that's faithfulness. That's, that's being true. That's being loyal to what God tells you to do. That means to be dedicated, to be honest about and sincere in agreement and harmony with God. Write this one down. Write this down. With all my heart. With all my heart. With all my heart. With all my... Ooh, I love you with all my heart. Ooh, have anybody had somebody tell you that before? No good way they weren't telling the truth. Soon as you got mad, they got mad at you. That all your heart went all out the door. He said, he said, he said, he said, your job is to love me with all your heart. That, that means to do it sincerely, to do it completely, to be fully committed to a person or an endeavor. It, it means to give, somebody say everything. It means to give everything, including time. Some of, you, some of the husbands be like, I, 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 I go out and work all the time. I give her all my money. Uh, yeah, but you got to give time too. He says, he says to give time, energy, your passion, your finances, your resources, and ultimately your life is what the Lord is looking for. Now, I didn't know if I signed up for all of that. I, I was going to give them, I just said I was going to be a Christian. See, a whole lot of Christians ain't signing up for him to be Lord of their life. So, 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 uh, um, uh, raise your hand, uh, raise your right hand, everybody. Raise your right hand. Raise it. You know, no, I'm talking about like you're in front of the judge. Raise it like that and say, say, eh, 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 I, I, I promise with all my heart. All right, that's, I want you to just remember that. that I, I pro, say it one more time. Say, Lord, I promise with all my heart. Okay. Uh, let's see what you promise it. All right. <laughs> Y'all just obedient today. I, amen. You didn't even ask what, what, what it is. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5. Look what he says. He says, trust in the Lord how should you trust in the Lord with all your heart you're supposed to trust in the Lord see I'm, I, I want y'all to get to the blessing plan but I, I, I gotta show you how to get there he said part of it is you gotta trust in the Lord with all your heart write that word trust down this is a good one write this word trust down trust trust it means having a firm belief it's confidence it's conviction it's an expectation in God's reliability in his strength and in his power having a firm belief a confidence why are you doing all the worrying you doing uh, I asked somebody uh, about their tithe, I said, I come to their tithe, and and and, and so they told me, you know, Bishop, I don't know. I think I'm afraid, cause I got this need, I got this need. I said, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me you worried about a fifty dollar thing that you you can't do, cause it, it, but you say you serve God. You worried that God can't replace your fifty dollars. Now I want you to just put that in perspective. That's why I be trying to tell y'all, uh, tithing is kindergarten. It's kindergarten when it comes to trusting God. You mean to tell me God can't replace your 50, your 50 dollars? Your little measly 10%? But he's God of everything. I believe he's the God of everything. But he can't replace your little measly 10%? How ridiculous is that? Your neighbor's hurting right now. Uh, touch him one time. Tell him, it's going to be okay. It'll be all right. He's going to help you in a minute. It's going to be okay. I know you're squirming right now. I know you're squirming. That's okay. It's going to be fine. All right? Uh, uh, so, so one of the things I got to get the people of God to see, y'all got to actually start trusting him. See, this is the part where many of us are messing up. You don't actually trust him. 
you don't actually believe he's reliable I wish I had eight witnesses that would just agree with me and tell somebody I know God's reliable I know he is I done seen him in my own life he ain't never somebody say never he ain't never let me down it's quite reliable I ain't never met nobody like him honestly nobody I've met is more reliable than him what he say he will do so he says this he says okay he said you need to trust him with all your heart and watch this next part then he says and lean not on your own understanding see here's another problem you keep trying to go back to your puny understanding you'll read like let's be honest he says he said this is what God says he says he said your thoughts not my thoughts he said and I like how he said it too because he's like don't even put your thoughts in the same category as my thoughts like, matter of fact, don't even put your same thoughts as in the same universe as my thoughts. We on two different places. He said, he said, your thoughts, not my thoughts. And neither is your ways my ways. He said, because as high as the heavens are above the earth, that's how high my thoughts are above your thoughts. In other words, you stupid and I'm smart. And so I don't know why you keep going by what you think. Well, well, you know, I don't know. I, I think I think I should do this. I, I, well, I just don't know. You need to stop knowing it all. Go get on your face before God and let him explain it to you. Look what he says. He says, he said, don't lean to your own understanding. He says, but watch this. In, somebody shout that word all. He said, but in all your ways. Your job, if you want to get to the next level, your job is to acknowledge me. And he says, and he shall direct your path. Uh, uh, I want y'all to see something. Remember, the Bible says, you, did you, you remember what he said about Hezekiah? He says, he did it with all his heart. Then, because he did it with all his heart, so he prospered. I just want y'all to see there is a, there is a, 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 a what do they call it, a reaction? What, how do they say it, an action, and then there's a reaction? So the action is he did it with all his heart. The reaction says, so he prospered. So I, I want you to see this now. He says, so if you would trust in the Lord with all your heart, that's what your job is. If you would acknowledge him in, uh, in all of your ways, he says, then the reaction is, he then will direct your path. See, you're trying to figure it out, and God already worked it out, and he's just waiting on you to stop doing your dumb thing. Ask your neighbor, when you going to get on the God plan? I, I'm sorry, man. That first neighbor is normally a bull one. Go to the next neighbor, turn to the, tell him, say, when are you gonna get on the God plan? He, he says, he says, verse number seven. He says, do not be wise in your own eyes. See, that's a whole lot of us. You think you're smart, and you ain't that smart. Who you talking to, bitch? I'm talking to you. You not that bright. Listen, none of us are that bright. We don't know nothing. You don't know what's going to happen in the next hour. Your phone can get a ring right now and say somebody has been lost in your family. And you'll break down crying, not knowing what to do. Why are you fooling with your understanding you, you need to understand he, he said he's going to direct your path and so he said don't be wise in your own eyes he says then fear the Lord and depart from evil then he says honor the Lord with your possessions honor the Lord with your possessions some of us are too stingy for God Oh, this message is about getting some money. That's what that, I see where he's going with this one. Listen, you can do it or not do it. I'm trying to help you. 
I'm listen I didn't say this you reading it right in the word of God he said he said honor the Lord with your possessions that word your means everything you got he said learn how to honor. see when you stop saying this my money then you you open your understanding up then when you realize no 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 this is God's money he just loaned it to you he just trusted it to you to do right by what he tell you to do I know it ain't my money that's why I don't worry about it I know I told y'all a story about the time I, I, I lost my wallet and, and, and uh, I lost my wallet and, and I had $50 in it Whoa, that was a lot of money back when I was in high school $50? some of y'all look at it $50 a whole lot of money now I'll take that 50 it was 1991. Left my wallet on the bus. Came home, told my mama about it. Said, Mama, I, I, lo I left my wallet. She said, You did? You didn't have no money in it? I said, Yeah, I got paid. I, I, I cashed my check. Look at that. My check was $50. I, I cashed my check. I got $50 in there. She said, Boy, what is wrong with you? You lost your money. And, 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 and I said, Mama, I'm not worried about that $50. She said, you not? I said, no. I'm not worried about that $50. I said, God gave me that $50. And I said, his tithe is still in it. <laughs> See, I'm faithful. I Listen, I'm faithful. I, some of y'all can't say that. Y'all lose y'all money. You can't say God's tithe's in it because you wasn't planning on paying it anyway. I said, Lord, God, I said, Mama, God's tithe is in that money. He'll bring it back to me. She was like, what? And as we're arguing in front of the front door, the TARC bus pulls up to my, to my door. The guy had got back to the depot, came back to my house to give me my wallet. When he gives me my wallet, we wait for him to leave, and my mama said, open it up and see if the $50 is. I said, mama, it's here. I opened it up, $50 in there. I said, I told you. What am I saying? See, when you know that everything that you have belongs to God. See, when you start getting that twisted, you start getting twisted in your own head. Look what he says. He says, so honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. He says, so your barns will be filled with plenty. Did y'all get that action? He said, honor the Lord with your possession. That's the action. And with the first fruits of all your, that's why some of y'all struggling in tithes because you wait to the end and I ain't got none left. He said the first fruit, you're supposed to pay him first. Ooh, I'm talking good and y'all acting nervous. I said you're supposed to pay God first. Come on, look at your neighbor real quick. Say you're supposed to give it to God first. You can tell who the tithers are. They say it so boldly. Everybody else said, you're supposed to give it to him first. See, you're not being faithful. He, I'm trying to show you how to be faithful to God. He said, if you would do that with all your possessions, you'll give him the first fruits of all your increase, of all your increase. He said, then, then your barns will be filled with plenty. And your vats will overflow with new wine. So many of us are missing out on that privilege. Because we nervous and stingy and we scared and we, we, we think, oh, well, I can't give it to that. I, I need it more for myself. Okay, okay. Go to Matthew. Sometimes you got to keep going. The saints will look at you real strong like, okay, pastor, we got you. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Uh, lift your hand again. Uh, lift your hand up again. Say, with all my heart. He says, and Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And he sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. Who, who's telling this story? Help me out. Who's telling the story? Jesus is telling the story. And, and, and he, he said there was a certain king. He said he arranged a marriage for his son. And he sent out the servants that call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing they were not willing to come 
Ain't that crazy? That the king sends out an invitation. He honors you with one of those invitations. And you got the nerve to turn the king down? Who would do that? Who, who in the right mind would not cancel everything that they got going on? So that they can be in the presence of the king. He said, but they were not willing. They were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited. He sent some more people, go tell them the second time. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and the fatted cattle are killed and, and, and all things are ready. Come on to the, come to the wedding. And, and but in verse five they said, but they made light of it. I, I want to just challenge you. So many of us we hear the word of God from week to week, from week to week, from week to week, from month to month, from year to year. And you know what the problem is? You take it lightly. You think it's just a good sermon, and you don't see it for what it really is. God speaking to you. God taking the time, God over all the universe, God taking the time to send you an invitation. Who is you that you have the nerve to turn down his invitation? And look what he says. He says, so he said, then he sent out the third time and, 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 and they made light of it. They went their ways and one to his farm and another to his business and the rest seized his servants treated them spitefully and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. See, I want you to understand like what's happening in our community. Uh, we keep saying it's the devil, but maybe it's just the judgment of God on our city. Maybe it's the judgment of Remember, the Bible says, and when they decided they wouldn't worship him as God, he turned them over. He gave them up to do those things that were unseemly. The stuff that just many years ago, you would have never said nobody would do nothing like that. Now it's the norm. Maybe it's because the people of God, we've turned down the invitation to come with all our heart to do everything that God's called for us to be. I pray that we would raise up a people that's not lazy spiritually. I pray that you would move from your lazy spiritual attitude. The Bible, look what he says. He said, they were not willing. See, we hear the word, but does it prick you enough to move you to action? To move you to a place where, Lord, where you call on God, Lord, what would you have me to do? Not me, not my brother, not my sister. Lord, but it's me. What do you want me to do? Touch yourself on the heart. Tell you, ask yourself, Lord, what do you want me to do? No, ask God now. I just told you, said, now you talk to God and ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? He says, therefore, since you wouldn't do what you were supposed to do. He said, he said uh, uh, in verse number eight, then he said to his servants, the wedding's ready. He said, but those who are invited are not worthy. Mm. The ones that he invited first, he declared, y'all not worthy. You was worthy a minute ago, but because you turned it down, look what he says to you. He says, you are not worthy. You know what that word worthy means? It means you want, you're not deserving. See, I, 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 the Bible says he came to his own first. But his own wouldn't receive him. So he left them and he went to another group. You know who the other group was? It's actually us. But what happens when the us's now won't come before God? Remember what he said? He said, he said, he then tells his servants, he says, now, he said, go into the highways. And as many as you find, invite them to the wedding. 
So those servants who went out out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found. Watch this. They got everybody that was good and bad. And they invited them to the wedding. And that filled, filled the house with guests. Uh, I, want you to, I want you to just be challenged for a moment. I want you to understand. Jesus said, if you won't serve me, I'll get rocks to do it. He said, if you won't worship me, don't worry about it. I got some rocks that will do better than you. He told the Pharisees, he says, because you decided you didn't want to come in, I'll go get the prostitute. She'll come in. She will worship me. Uh, um, I don't want to mess with you, but I got to. I watched you as you came into the sanctuary. Most of us, no praise on our lips. Watched you as you sat in your seat. Most of us, barely lift our hands, barely go before God, barely worship God. And we are the people of God. If we have no fire, if we won't do it with all our heart, who else going to do it? See, a, a lot of times we want some special thing to happen. Oh, let the glory come. How the glory going to come when you don't set an atmosphere for the glory to come? No, what we do is we wait for other people to do it. We sit and we wait. And as soon as the spirit moves, then I'll move. Yeah, I'm, I'm messing with you today because the Lord pushed me this morning to mess with you. I didn't want to actually. I was going to go to Africa. I wanted more of a happy message myself. Uh, 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 look what he says then in verse number. As soon as he says it, drop down to verse 37. Look what he says. Then Jesus said to them, to him, you shall love the Lord your God. How should you love the Lord your God? Come on, say it loud. How should you love him? You should love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind. He said, this is the first and the great commandment. Not a suggestion, not a request. It's the first and great commandment. Who said that? Jesus said it. He said, if you don't learn how to love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, until you learn how to love him with all your soul, with all your mind, he said, then you, you, you're not fulfilling the great, the first and great commandment. Woo! Woo! I'm sweating up here today. Uh, um, 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 uh, go to, um, Go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. When you have it, hold your right arm up again and your right hand up again and say, with all my heart. He says in verse 16, now behold, one came to Jesus saying, good teacher, what good thing should I do to have eternal life? So, so Jesus said to him, if you want to enter into life, he said, you need to keep the commandments. That's number one, keep the commandments. Then he says, he said to him, uh, which ones? Which ones should I keep? Ain't that a crazy question? Ain't that just like the saints? Which ones do I feel like keeping? And which ones, I had somebody told me, a, a, a young person not too long ago came and told me, said, Pastor, I wish this wasn't a rule. She was talking about needing some. She was hot. She was talking about needing some. She said, I just really wish this wasn't a rule. I wish God would just give you a pass. Now, she said it, but you be thinking it all the time. I wish this is something that, 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 that wasn't even in there. Well, it is in there. He says, uh-uh. Woo! Somebody's laying with somebody they ain't married to I just I just felt that right there somebody somebody laying with somebody that they not married to 
I say it again. I said somebody's laying with somebody that they're not even married to. And they're making excuses. God understands. He knows my heart. He knows your heart is desperately wicked. He knows you need to repent and turn from that. That's what he knows. Well, I didn't know I was going to come in here and get burned today. You have, but God knows what you needed. He says, so keep the commandments. The guy said, which ones? Ain't that, that's just crazy. What do you mean, which ones? All of them. He said, well, he said, Jesus, so Jesus went down. He says, you should not murder. Okay, good, I'm good there. You should not commit adultery. Good there. You should not steal. Okay, good there. You should not bear false witness. Good there. Honor your father and your mother. Good there. He said, you should love your neighbor as yourself. I'm good there. I'm good, Jesus. He said, then the young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. He said, what do I still like, Jesus? I'm doing good. I'm 10 for 10. And, and then he said, Jesus said to him, he said, he said, okay. Here you go. Here's what, if you're going to do all. Now, if you want to do some, that's on your business. But if you're going to do all, he said, he said, then uh, if you want to be perfect, he said, go sell what you have and give it to the poor. And then, and then remember the action, then here comes the reaction. He said, and then he said, you will have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. But when the young man heard that, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now, trust me, I told you this before. How crazy is this? You see what Jesus offered him? Does anybody recognize what Jesus offered him for some money, for some weak little money to be obedient in that area of his life? He said, I'm going to give you treasures in heaven. Treasure in heaven. And we all know that treasure, uh, uh, that, that, that heaven is forever and ever. This money in this life is so temporary and some of us are so messed up by it. It's holding you back from the next level in your life. But you got so much of it so you don't want to, you struggling with it. Well, I don't know about giving that though. He says, he says, he said, be obedient to me. He said, do this. I'll give you treasure in heaven. And he said, come follow me. That's what he told Peter. That's what he told John. He said, he said, come on, you can follow me. I'm trying to tell us until you learn how to give your all. Somebody say all. No, everybody shout all. Until you learn how to give your all, you're going to live beneath what God has called for you to do and who he's called for you to be and what God has in store for your life. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 9. Look what he says. He says, he says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has has prepared for those who love him. Love him how? With all my heart. There are things that God has prepared for you that you will never walk into until you give all your heart. Am I making sense to anybody in here? He then says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 16, he says this. He said, uh, this is just to the people who are loving with all their heart. The rest of y'all, we're going to pray for y'all. I don't know what good it's going to do. But he says this. He says in verse 16, he says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall, uh, I don't know who's part of the we, but everybody's part of we say we, we, we shall, we sh so shall we ever be with the Lord. I want you to find out from yourself 
You need to ask yourself what's holding you back? What's keeping you from giving your all? What's keeping you, what's holding you back? Is it complacency? Is it laziness? You know, one of the things I found is we feed our spirit with the wrong stuff. And wherever, wherever you're feeding your, whatever you're feeding your spirit with, that's what your spirit would just love and just enjoy. And so, so many of us, uh, uh, we, we fill our, our, our minds with things of the world. We, we love uh, 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 sports. I like sports. I don't love sports. You'll know that I just barely like it because I don't hardly watch it. I don't hardly pay attention to it. I can name maybe two, three quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't know. You say, well, Bishop, you need to get on there. You need, no, some of y'all in fantasy. Oh, yeah. Some of y'all, uh, uh, not only some of y'all young people, so, and some of the older, older guys, too. Y'all done actually got the game and put your, you done made you in the game. So when you see the running back, you done made yourself a running back or quarter, and, and, and you in fantasy land. And that's where your heart is. So, some of us, we, we got a heart. We look at lustful things. We listen to lustful things. And we wonder why we lustful. Bishop, I can't seem to control myself. That's because you, what you're watching is what you're listening to. I told you, I go to the gym. And, and when I go to the gym, uh, uh, I told my wife, I need like some blinders on. Who know what I'm talking about? I need a pair of blinders. Somebody make up some blinders for me. See where, where you can see but not see. Because I thought uh, 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 girl walked by, butt all tightened up in, in them little spandex thing, and, 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 and she wanted to pop it out. I, I'm like... I'm on, the, I'm on the treadmill. They got 20 TVs. Six of them people are having sex on there. So I got to run with my head down. But what you feed in your spirit? What you feed in your heart? See, if you want to have love the Lord with all your heart, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to start having to fill your spirit, fill your heart with the things of God. The Bible says where your treasure is. See, what you're spending your money on, that's where your heart's going to be. Some of you got your heart on shoes. Some of you got your heart on hair and nails. Some of you got your heart on on yourself that's why you standing in the mirror 40 times a day taking a picture of yourself if you're going to fall in love with God you got to start loving his word you got I'm talking about you got to love it some of you all you get the word out when you're ready to go to sleep I'm gonna let this word make me fall asleep the devil is a liar. I can't play the word before I go to sleep. I can't go to sleep. So I'm thinking, hearing about what David did, and I'm who I get the quickening. Oh, hear what Paul here. Who Jesus? Oh, I feel sorry for my wife sometimes. Over speaking in tongues. <laughs> If you're going to have a love for God, the things of God, you got to start pouring things, the right stuff in your heart. Who am I talking to? Raise your hand. Just tell me. Who am I talking? You got to pour in the right stuff. Uh, I got two more scriptures, but, but, but one I want to show you. Uh, this is for those of you that won't do it. These, I just got one scripture for the, those of you that won't do it. Just because I got to do the whole council. You know what I'm saying? I got to tell the whole story. So it's just, just for the ones who ain't going to do this. Revelation chapter 14, verse number 11 says, And the smoke of their torment ascends how long? Oh, 
Jesus. He said, for the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night. That's just for y'all. Uh, let me ask a quick question. How long's forever again? No, no, no. Put it in years for me. How long is it? A billion years. A zillion. Is it such thing as a gazillion? I made a word up. It's a big one. Gaz gazillion. Infinity. Infinity times infinity. And forever is longer than that. But I don't understand why God had to put the second ever on there. He wants you to know. Listen, he said, uh, 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 the things of this life don't even the suffering of this life don't even compare to the glory that's going to be revealed in the last day now whoa i'm i'm in here oh i gotta tell you this okay this is where i'm gonna end that and i'll let y'all go uh, uh uh matthew uh matthew chapter 13 uh matthew chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 verse number 44 uh, 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 he says again the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field it's like treasure hidden in a, in, in a field which a man found he, he didn't own that field he, but he found it in the field and, and, and so when he found it in the field he hid it back because he can't take it out of there because it ain't his field so he puts it back, he hides it back. And, and, and then, and for joy over what he found, he goes and sells, what did he sell? He sells everything that he has. And he goes and buys that field. And, and I want you to see this. This man was so excited about the treasure that he found, he went and sold everything. And, 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 he, and that means he had to sell uh, uh, all of his past stuff. Uh, he had to sell everything that he had presently to acquire the future that he wanted. And, and so I want you to consider that uh, uh, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is that thing uh, uh, that's hidden that that's hidden is the hidden treasure in the field the the kingdom of god the thing that we're all searching for the thing that the kingdom of heaven the thing that we're all rooting for the all that we're, we're pushing for is the thing that's hidden in the field and the only way you're gonna get it you like the man you gotta go sell everything you own everything you got your past your desires, your wants, the mess ups, the weed you smoke, the person you laying with, you got to get rid of all of it and say, I'd rather have Jesus. I desire God more than all of these other things. He said, then and only then can you have enough to go and purchase that field. That has the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven in it. I want you to imagine another thing. Imagine that actually you now are the treasure in the field. And, and the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He gave up everything so that he can go and purchase you the treasure that's in the field. That's what God did for you. You say, why should I do it for God? Because he already did it for you. He, he listen, God is, he, he, he's the perfect example. He said, I gave up everything because I loved you so much. Now I want you to love me with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And I want you to give up all your stuff so you can come and follow me. This is, this may be hard for some people but God do have a people I say God do have a people the Bible says broad is the way come on somebody help me preach that right there he said broad is the way that leads to death
broad is the way it's a big it's called broadway broadway is massive to those marching to hell but he said narrow is the way he said it's, it's very narrow he said narrow is the way that that leads to to, to, to righteousness that leads to, to, to god it's a narrow way it's a narrow way and everybody who names oh i'm a christian don't mean you're going in only those who would decide in their heart i'm gonna give them everything i made up in my mind i was i wasn't saved hadn't given my life to the lord yet i was in the fourth i think i was i was in the third grade i was in the third grade we didn't get to go on a field trip and and so you know some of y'all wasn't that broke, but I think my parents were that broke. And uh, so we couldn't go on the field trip. So uh, they kept me in the library. Yeah, I was at Simple Elementary School. We was in the library. And uh, I was sitting there looking and reading something, a book or something. And I looked over and this boy walked in. He, he was a fifth grader. He was walking. He had his Bible. He was holding his Bible out. He was walking. He was reading his Bible. And uh, then he went and sat down. And he started reading his Bible, and, and, um, and it's in the—he's a fifth grader. Yeah, when was the last time you seen a fifth grader in school reading the Bible? He's reading the Bible, and these three boys walked in. They were fifth graders too. They came in and they knocked his Bible out of his hand, and they pushed him down. And I was like, "Ooh, they get ready to fight." And the boy picked his Bible up and he smiled, and he sat back down and started reading it again. And they smacked him again. They pushed him down again. They knocked the Bible out of his hand. And something on the inside said to me, I know it was God, said, go stand with him. You love me like that. He loves me. Go stand with him. And I'll never forget, I looked over at them and I saw those boys. I said, them some big boys. I was like, I think I'm going to just sit right here. And I didn't move. And I, I watched this boy, fifth grade, stand for God. And then they, he, they all walked out. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I thought you said you love me. I was in the third grade. I heard God. I thought you said you loved me. I thought you said you wanted me. And I began to cry. Oh, my shatabashi. Every time I tell the story, it comes real to me again. I said to God in the third grade, I'll never do that again. I said to God in the third grade, I said, God, from here on out, I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to stand for you. I made a decision as a third grader. He said, Pastor, did you live right after that? No, I was still a devil. Took me a while to get it right. Messed up. Did some stuff. But in all the time, I always said to God, but God, I want you more than this stuff. Took me to high school. I remember getting in high school and getting in a bunch of stuff. And uh, I was a guy uh, uh, that, that, that would call the parties. Like I could, I, I could call, man, I don't know what was up. I just could call a party together. You say the, the pastor's son, yes, me. I, I could throw the party together, and and and, and I would I would get on I would get on the phone. One time we had a, 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 a house and we was over at our friend's house. It's about four guys, and they, we said let's throw a party. We said we we need some girls. I said wait a minute. So I start calling girls up. By the time we were done, we had like uh, 10, 15 girls in the house and four dudes. So they wasn't happy. So I went out there and I, I started calling these guys in off the street. Come in here. We got girls in here. And, and, and I, I, I remember, I remember I used to do this stuff all the time. But I used to tell those guys all the time. I said, listen, y'all better enjoy me. Y'all better have a good time with me right now. Because at some point, God going to save me. I used to tell them. I said, at some point, this stuff going to be over with. I'm going to go with God. They okay Ford they used to call me MF not because I was Michael Ford that 
was my favorite word. I said it every other word I was saying when I wasn't around my daddy and mama. He said, yeah, for you ain't, you ain't doing nothing. But then one day, one day, one day, when I thought I was going to go do some mess, uh, 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 District Elder Morton pulled me to the side. And he said, hey, boy, he said, tell me, tell me, you got that Holy Ghost right now. And I know you preaching already. I know you are, who you are, man, you're a mighty man of God. And I'll be like, what you talking about? I'm going to go do some mess like in just two hours. And he was like, no, no, no. He said, he said I'll tell you what, go do your mess. He said, but be back here in the morning. God's going to save you tomorrow. He said, God going to fill you with the Holy Ghost tomorrow. I said, really? So I got up there to do my mess, and the girl came and told me, it wasn't my wife. It, it, the girl told me, she said, I got a hotel for us, Michael. We're going to stay here all night. And I said, well, that's tempting. But I need a ride to go back to church tomorrow. And I called a ride with somebody to come back to church tomorrow. And the next day, my brother tapped me. Mark came and tapped me. He said, some old lady is in the back want to talk to you. That old lady was Mother Frazier. She was old back then. I don't, Mother was just old for a long time. He said, that old lady is in the back. She want to talk to you. And I went, there, went to the back, went to the back, and they took me into a, a nursery. Took me in this nursery. And Mother started saying, she said, don't you want to be saved? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, don't you want the Holy Ghost? I said, I sure do. I said, I came back for it. She said, God, get ready to fill you right now. She said, all right, boy. She said, start praising God. And I said, thank you, 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 thank you. And she said, not that. Don't do that. Not that. She said, God is, she said, she said, she said, God, it's a gift. You ain't got to beg for it. He said, she said, God already done sent it for you. All you got to do is just receive it. Whoa, Jesus lifted up my hands and all of a sudden oh my God the tongues begin to flow I begin to speak in another language that heavenly language I begin to speak in that heavenly who remember that time I read that first I begin to speak in the heavenly language and, 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 and watch it mother said she said oh God she said his words are so choppy and he's going so fast slow his words down Lord and I begin to say ando maka Dobusha kande mokoni ma I mean, I, and, and, and she said, she said, now Lord, he seemed kind of mad about it. I wasn't mad. She said, but give him some joy. I said, oh, Jesus. That Holy Ghost is real. I said, that Holy Ghost is real. I said, the Holy Ghost is real. Listen, so, so, so I left the meeting. I left the meeting. And I went back and I, 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 I had a, the next week I had a party planned for my buddy. I don't know if Willie might be listening. But we had a party planned for Willie. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and I told Willie, I said, Willie, I ain't coming to the party. And he was, we was best friends. He said, Why, what are you talking about? You, you, you sick? You're not going to say, no. I said, I got saved. And he got quiet. Because he know I've been telling him about that thing. I said, Willie, I got saved. He said, no, you didn't. You ain't not you. Not you. You didn't get you and you the same guy you no. I said, no, I, I got the Holy Ghost. And uh, so they was mad at me. My friends was mad at me. People was dropping me. I was dropping people. I dropped her for a little while. She wasn't saved, you know. I, I was by that time I was sanctified. I was looking for a sanctified girl. And, 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 and all of a sudden, uh, 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 but I, wasn't, I hadn't spoken tongues again since the first time. And, and, but I think God wanted to show me something. When the devil was telling me, you ain't got nothing. You can't even speak in tongues no more. You ain't got nothing. And I said, I thought about that thing. I said, wait a minute. I haven't done the stuff that I had normally done who know what I'm talking about? All the stuff that I kept saying I can't help but to do, all of a sudden I had power to help what I was doing. 
And the only reason they could call me MF is because my name was Michael Ford because I hadn't said that word since I got saved. I said, no, I, 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 some, God done changed me. Who experienced that change before? I said, God done changed me. And I made up in my mind, I said, Lord, as much as I was with the devil, oh, and I was with the devil. Who was with the devil for a while? Who was on this? I was with the devil. If we was friends, I tried to convince you to do the mess I was doing. But I said, Lord, as much as I was with the devil, no, Lord, no, Lord, more than what I was with the devil, I got to be more sold out to you than I was ever with him. Everybody that is deciding they're going to give their all, stand up and lift your hands to the Lord and recommit yourself don't worry about those of you that haven't committed I'm going to give you a chance in a second but those of you who I'm talking to you done gave your life to the Lord but you ain't been on fire like you was you ain't felt the power of God like you was you haven't committed yourself like you was come on recommit yourself now in the name of Jesus come on come on I don't want to have to tell you what to say it's your it's, it, this is your walk with the Lord recommit yourself recommit yourself Come on, you, I'm talking to you online. I'm talking to all of y'all. Everybody is walking with the Lord, but you ain't walk like you was walking. You ain't walk like you should be walking. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Set a fire in my heart again. Set a fire in my heart again. Oh, set a fire, oh God. Set a fire in my heart, Lord. Put that fire back in my heart. I used to, when I got saved, when I first got saved, I told everybody about Jesus, whether you wanted to hear it or not, because it was like fire in me. I, it was so much, I, I, had, I had to tell somebody what God had done in my life. Where's your fire at? Where's the fire at? Where you fired up about God? When's the last time you cheered for God like you cheered for your favorite team? When's the last time you got excited about God like some of the other stuff that you get excited about? If it's not there, cry out to God. Cry out to God.